Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to Terminator Dark Fate Defiance. This is a trailer of gameplay that was released on the Twitch stream that Slytherin did recently. I got the footage, and now we're going to have a look while I fill you in on the game. Now, first things you need to know, this is set in the Dark Fate timeline. So, the enemy, the AI enemy, if you will, is Legion not Skynet, although I suppose for all intents and purposes, they're fairly similar. I'm not fully up to date on the Terminator movies and timelines, so I don't exactly know how this is going to impact the game. The voices are currently lacking from the game, so the Alpha 1, Alpha 2 chatter that you can see over here would normally be voiced by voice actors, but seeing as the game is still in development and is going to come out in about six months, uh, latest that is, because they're expecting it before Christmas. So before the 25th of December is when this game is going to be released. They didn't give me an exact detail on that. So, um, what are we looking at? It is, according to them, an RTS. I think it's officially an RTT. Real-time tactical. Because there is no base building. The mission that you're about to look at is one of the campaign missions, and some of these campaign missions are going to be supposedly quite challenging. They said uh, normal is hard and hard is impossible mode. So yeah, expect a challenge. Now, something I immediately noticed when I was looking at the footage is it's pretty difficult to see. The contrast, especially for me as a colorblind person, and perhaps also for you as someone who is not, is not that great. So, in my situation, when I'm looking at the minimap and you can see the overview of what you're currently looking at, like what's the camera pointing at, that could be a little lighter, a little wider. I would really appreciate that. Now, the job here is to intercept a Legion convoy. So there are several convoys spread out across this road. They're going to be coming in in several groups. And it is your objective to cut these guys off and cut them to pieces. It reminds me quite a bit of one of the missions that used to be in Command and Conquer Generals. It was also part of the campaign back then. Um, I really like these kind of kill a convoy mission or, well, the other way around as well. Uh, protect the convoy mission because it does make for some very interesting gameplay. It can be quite dynamic. You're not defending one spot. You can engage over a larger swath of terrain and you can pick the area that suits you best. The factions that are gonna be in the game is three. First, you have the resistance. Basically everybody who hasn't yet been killed by Legion. They're gonna be picking up weapons left, right and center. So it's basically a ragtag guy, uh, set of guys. You're going to have Whatever vehicle that they happen to come across, um, you can armor up basically an RV and use that as a vehicle. It's really, well, almost GLA in their, <laughs> in their nature. Um, they pick up whatever they can find, they scavenge and they improve. The second faction, and supposedly this is what you play in the campaign, the Founders. Um, the Founders in the sense that I suspect they were the original founders of the country. And the Founders are basically what's left of the US military, which is why you're seeing that these guys have Abrams tanks, as well as pretty high-end weaponry and APCs. The third is Legion. This is Legion, it's not Skynet, as we're taking this into the Dark Fate timeline, so it's a bit different from the previous timeline, and again, I'm not fully up to snuff on those. Um, they use robots of all makes and models to try and make your life very, very uncomfortable. As for playable factions, they're all playable. So in the campaign, you're going to be playing the founders. At least this was more or less said in the stream. You will not be able to play as the uh, Legion faction, so the, bo the bots. You will, however, be able to play as Skynet in Skirmish. Now, when it comes to game modes, there's going to be 1v1, 2v2, and that is both in skirmish and multiplayer mode. So, you can play 2v2 against your friends, you can play 1v1 against your friend, um, you can play 1v1 or 2v2 against the bots. And I don't mean <laughs> Legion in this case, I mean actual bot players. So, in that sense, um, interestingly, no 4v4. 
Um, interestingly, no in co-op campaign. I would have definitely liked to see that. But this is what we have, or at least for now. When it comes to calling in new units slash reinforcing, based on what I've been able to gather from the stream, it seems like you are not able to do so. This is a very interesting take on a mechanic that is pretty much integrated into every RTT slash RTS, the ability to get more units. So how do you do that? Well, you get a set amount of units or you can recruit additional units and those you bring into one of these campaign battles. How this is going to work in Skirmish, I don't know. We'll just have to find out. Now, talking about these units in the campaign, they are persistent. So there are a couple of units um, that will have unique identifiers, that will have unique names, like hero units. The rest of your units transfer over from one battle to the next. And as they do that, they gain experience. In this battle, you can see some of these units that have a couple of chevrons. That indicates, uh, indicates that they have gained some experience. With experience, these guys get the ability to pick a new ability. Um, it might be throwing smoke, it might be calling in airstrikes, it might be deploying smoke grenades. What have you depends on the unit. That ability sticks and that ability is going to transfer over to the next battle. Now when it comes to controlling your units and not being able to reinforce and not get new ones, um, it does mean that you're going to have to play potentially pretty conservatively with your units. I don't know if you'll be able to reinforce a unit using a logistics unit. As you can see on the screen, um, the unit that's currently lit up, Sintu, he has an EMP. Um, the guys over here with the heavy weapon squad, they have ammo. You need to resupply them. If you put a resupply unit nearby, is that going to mean that you will also resupply the squad? So get more members? I don't know. Perhaps. Um, that would be nice if it did. Especially if it seems like, at least in this particular mission, you cannot bring in additional units. I thought it was a bit vague. Um, I hope you can bring in additional units. But I suppose it makes sense from a perspective of you are one of the last bastions of humanity. You don't simply get to call in an infinite number of tanks just because you feel so. Um, this is not war game. This is not the... Command and Conquer Tiberian Sun or Command and Conquer what have you, where you can just get additional units. You're going to have to make do with the units that you get. So protect them, heal them up if possible, and potentially pull them back and go to a different position if you become overwhelmed. If you complete a mission, you'll be able to scavenge the map for whatever is currently available from the corpses that were left behind. So, let's say you take down one of the tanks that you see currently on the screen, and I mean the Legion tanks, the robot tanks. Those things carry some sort of a weapon. You'll supposedly be able to scavenge that weapon, and either equip it to whatever compatible vehicle or infantry unit that you have, or you'll be able to sell it off. With that, you'll be able to then further customize your units. So, they're both combining for the campaign, that is, a scavenge mechanic as well as a, con a customization mechanic in one. So you'll be able to um, not only pick up weapons and adjust those weapons to your own needs, you'll also be able to change the armor schemes on your vehicles. So you'll be able to add and remove armor depending on your playstyle preference. And I mean, yes, you might think more armor is more better. Um, I don't think so because more armor is also heavier and that quick unit might not be able to get around as quick as you like. In this particular campaign mission that you're looking at, you can see on the top left hand side that there are some objectives, including save the pilot and then take the pilot to the evacuation zone. Supposedly, completing that objective will grant you air support. Air support is something that can get called in by infantry units, but only if you have completed this particular objective. So, especially in campaign missions, completing sub-objectives is definitely going to be critical if you want to gain some tactical or strategical advantages later. This is probably going to be less so for Skirmish, although maybe they're going to incorporate some sort of mechanic later on. 
you can have units with their vehicles bail out. So a tank crew can leave a vehicle, potentially if they decide that it's not worth it. Uh, you'll be able to crew slash recrew vehicles later. Again, this is not very well uh, documented as of yet. I mean, the game is about six months from release. So it's going to be a while before we learn a bit more about that. But that ability, recruiting units later, recruiting vehicles later, is definitely going to be interesting. Now, let's have a little chat about the UI, shall we? Let's have a look at what's on the screen. Top left, objectives, top right, all your available units. That is a lot of information. Um, I'm looking at this game pretty much for the first time. So it is very possible that it's just simply cognitive overload for me and that there is too much information that's trying to make its way into my brain. Um, I think it's a bit cluttered in the sense that you get a lot of different units. The top row is going to have all the infantry and then the bigger rows are going to have the bigger units, i.e. the vehicles. It seems like a lot of information is getting thrown at you. Um, it could be useful, yes, you can click your units very quickly and immediately give them new orders, yes. Is that going to be useful? Especially considering that they have this many units on the field at any given time across the whole map? Maybe. Because, well, you can only see a really small portion of the map at any given time. I mean, um, the actual visual of the camera. So, yeah, you're going to probably need that in order to keep everybody alive. This is also where the next part comes in, which is the bottom right-hand side. Units have abilities, and as they level up, they will gain more abilities. So what this is going to mean is that a unit such as the one that you're looking at right now, this dozer, is currently dragging an emplaced battery, or rather a battery that can be emplaced. It doesn't have to be. That battery needs to be dropped off manually. So in order to do that, you're going to have to click a button. There we go, it's detached, and now the dozer can back off, and the battery can stay in its position. This does mean micromanagement, and your one unit has essentially become two. So that's going to give you even more units to manage. Uh, I'm concerned that if you give every single unit an ability, and you give the player about 30 to 40, 50 units, how are we going to make use of them all? How are we going to be able to control all the abilities and micro all the units that we need to micro? I think it's going to be a lot of work, um, and I hope that the units will have some sort of sense about when they should use what ability. Because without that, I fear that a lot of it is going to go to waste. It's going to be tricky to implement such a system because at some point, for example, you might want to have your vehicle evacuate from the area. But if your Bradley, in this case, using as an example, has already decided that it wants to use its smoke dischargers and get the hell out, then you can't use the smoke discharger anymore. You cannot set up a quick smoke screen. You're going to have to find some other way. So. I'm, and this is not just for this game, I'm also seeing this for Broken Arrow. It's cool to have a lot of different units with a lot of different abilities, and then to have them level up and gain even more abilities. But can we manage it all? That's my biggest concern. Can we manage all of these abilities? And I think it's going to be um, partial skill issues. In the sense that a newer player is going to go, holy shit, I'm happy if I can keep my units alive in the first place. I don't really think I'm going to be able to manage all of these abilities. A more skilled player, somebody who's spent more time with the game, is going to go, oh yeah, we're going to pop smoke here, we're going to throw that unit there, we're going to deploy uh, the, uh, I don't know, we're going to put these units in prone, and then we're going to move on to the next part. So I suspect that in 1v1s and 2v2s against other players, it's definitely going to make an impact on the battlefield. Um, whether it'll have an immense amount of impact in campaigns, not too sure. I'd say if you want to implement something like this, you're going to have to give the player potentially some sort of tactical pause. Um, I don't know, hitting the space bar and being able to issue some orders so that your units can actually follow your orders and that you can use those abilities. 
What was also said about this stream is that it's currently played out as a pretty zoomed out view. You can definitely zoom in more and you can see all the eye candy. This is always an interesting trade-off when it comes to tactical slash strategical games. Do you zoom in and do you watch the eye candy or do you zoom out and keep a strategic overview? But basically at some point if you zoom out far enough you're just going to be moving icons across the screen. It's a trade-off. Um, I'm happy I don't have to be the one to make that trade-off, but it is definitely something that the developer has to think about. They have to think about it for this game, others have to think about it for their own game, and they might decide something different. I, for one, am with this game happy that I can actually see units roaming around. Um, the opposite side of the spectrum, I would say, is Warno, where you're basically just clicking labels and telling a label to attack a different label. And if you put your labels in the right place, you're going to see other labels disappear, essentially. Right here in this game, I can actually still see units getting destroyed. I can see units going after other units, shooting them. There's still some eye candy, and I really appreciate that. The next part, unit icons. What do we have? We've got a Bradley with seemingly a level of experience at the top, four out of four crew members, and I believe that, yes, individual crew members can get shot out of a vehicle. I'm not sure how this is gonna work, um, considering there's a recruiting mechanic, I suspect that you'll be able to get more crew members in and make sure that a vehicle is fully crewed again. You got fuel, you have what I suspect is their hit point pool next to the wrench, and then you have ammo of 700. But, you also have ammo in the form of the 25mm AP, 25mm high explosive incendiary, 8 smokes, 762, and the HGM. So I'm not sure exactly what that last icon is, but I suspect it is yet another form of ammunition. The game doesn't really seem to show. Um, they do have some additional icons, something that looks like a crosshair, something that looks like uh, potentially mechanical damage, as well as fire. So I suspect that these are critical, well, critical hits, critical debuffs, and that they're going to impact the unit if they have received such a critical hit. Now as for the mem now, right next to it, I quite like it. Um, I like the buildings. The buildings are very, very clear. I would like to see a bit more contrast between what the units are doing on the screen, uh, especially mine and the enemy. As a colorblind person, there is not enough contrast. Now, I do believe that there are some AI units on the screen at this point. But for me, the distinction is not good enough. Um, something like red team, blue team is far better. But this is just my particular brand of colorblindness. Uh, Yours might vary if you have any at all. So, what's my conclusion so far? I quite like what I'm seeing. It looks like an interesting game. It looks like it has a couple of very interesting mechanics. How it's going to play out um, is going to be anybody's guess. We only really have this bit of footage to show. There are a couple of more cinematic shots that you can also look at on the Twitch stream as well as on the Steam page. And they do seem to be telling a bit more of a story, especially with the campaign. So this takes me back to the briefings that you used to have with Command & Conquer Red Alert. Um, the GDI, when you were playing the Tiberian Sun um, universe. I like those sort of intermission uh, videos because they just make the thing feel a whole more alive. As for player versus player gameplay, can't speak to that yet. Definitely going to be interesting to see if a meta develops. Is uh, this or that particular build with Legion going to be very good or... Are you going to need units X, Y, and Z from the resistance to really quickly roll over the enemy? Keep in mind, there's no base building. So I think it's going to be very much coming down to your ability to actually use the units in the field and potentially in skirmish reinforce. Because otherwise, I don't quite see how it's going to work in the long run. You would definitely have very specific sets of units that would work well. Some would work less well, but might be more fun. You know, there's all these different types of metas and mechanics that will eventually develop. As for playability, um, there is going to be a beta, but there is currently no ATA. They did say soon, whatever soon happens to be. Um, we're just going to wait for that, although you can sign up to be a beta tester through the link down below in the description. It's going to take you to the Slytherin page. 
And again, the game is going to come out sometime before Christmas, winter 2023. So, uh, well, at least we should have it by December 24th, but it's not unusual for a game to get delayed. So those are my thoughts. That's a quick overview of Terminator Defiance. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed it and, um, well, see you soon for more.